Okay, now let's talk about machine trapunto. This is a technique that seems to scare people, but it is so simple, and the outcome of it is just glorious. I just love this, and it's very, very easy to do for, for what, what you get out of it. It's just wonderful. This is a finished block. And this is my sample block, and this is my design. This is stuffed work, is what trapunto means. It's stuffed work. So this part that you see here is stuffed, and it's raised up. And then I used a variegated thread to fill in around it. To make the trapunto really pop, if you fill in the outside with some really close filler, it makes it even that much more wonderful. Let me show you the steps that it takes to get to there. What I have is a, just my, this would be your regular quilt top, and I have marked a design on here. Now, marking versus paper on this situation is, is something that depends on your sewing machine. If you have a presser foot pressure gauge on your sewing machine, which means you can raise your presser foot up and give a little bit less pressure on there, then you can get by with using paper. But because we're using some extra layers of batting, it raises it up, makes it more puffy, and if you don't have that way to raise that presser foot up, it'll rip your paper. So I have drawn this on here for now. So this machine does have the presser foot pressure gauge, so I, I could probably use paper. But it's one of those things you kind of need to be aware that it could be a possibility of a problem, but, but not that big a deal. So what I need is my quilt top, and this is before you're ready to quilt it. This is just when you've got the quilt top in its raw form, and then I have two layers of batting that go underneath it. And it, I have found that batting that has either 20-30% polyester in it or 100% polyester works best because it really makes it much more puffy than just a regular cotton. And I lay that batting underneath that design. It doesn't have to be anything perfect, you just need to cover the design with both layers of batting. So you line that up underneath there. Put this in the sewing machine with wash away thread on the top of the machine. This is water soluble thread and it melts away with water. So you put this on the top of your machine, put any kind of regular cotton in the in the bobbin and I typically put a cream color or something that's going to match the color of my batting in the bobbin. Just regular cotton thread in the bobbin. You don't need to put the wash away in the bobbin. So this is on the top of my machine and I stitch this design just with the batting and nothing else underneath it. So you actually put this in the machine just with batting underneath it. No other fabric underneath there. And then stitch that completely. And here's one that's been started stitching. So I've stitched this much of it and as you can see on the batting, I've used yellow thread so you can see it a little bit better. And this is stitched with the batting underneath. Very, very simple. And it's got wash away thread on top. And then here's one that's completely stitched with the wash away thread. Now the back of this, once you get it stitched, this is where it takes a little finesse, but it's doable. I like these applique scissors. They seem to get down to the point and yeah, I have tried many, many different kinds of scissors and that's what you'll want to do too, to find the pair that works for you. It took me a long time to figure out which one works for me. You want something that's pointed on the end, but you don't want it too pointed because you don't want to snip your top fabric. And that's a balancing act that just takes a little bit of practice. But what I do then is I put my fingers underneath where I want to, want to snip this and I just snip this batting away from wherever I don't want it to be stuffed. So all these areas back here that is that are not stuffed, that's what I want to cut away. And you just ver very carefully snip very small pieces so as not to snip the top of your quilt top. Okay, it happens. It does happen. It happens to me almost every time I do this where I snip a little bit of my quilt top. To fix that, I don't start over. That's way too difficult. If it's a very small snip, I just remember where it is or put a little pin there. And when I go to my next step where I'm going to stitch back over it, I make sure that I do a little catch stitch there. And if it's a very large snip, then you might want to put a little fusible web on the back and just give that a little extra strength to, to make that tear go together and then stitch it 
if you're using a contrasting thread to stitch the rest of it, you might want to put a thread in that matches the t quilt top and fix that little tear first and then go on and do your decorative stitching. So there's a few different ways to deal with that other than starting over. Starting over is just really not an option for me. So you continue snipping this and you need to get right down into those little corners and snip away and with my finger underneath here I can kind of feel that my scissors are between the quilt top and the batting so that you're not getting into your top and you're not snipping that top. It happens so easily sometimes if you're not paying attention but it really isn't difficult as long as you just practice a little bit and find the right pair of scissors that work for you. These type of scissors may not work for you. A different might, pair might work better. So, so keep an open mind and, and do what works for you. Once you get that all snipped away, then it's going to look like this where all of the background, this has all been snipped away in the background. And I've pinned this again with one more piece of batting covering the whole thing. So once your entire quilt top was done and the batting was all snipped away and you're ready to quilt it the entire thing, then you layer it just like we basted before with an entire another layer of batting and your backing and then you stitch back on to with regular cotton thread or whatever kind of thread you're going to use on top of where that wash away thread is. Stitch that one more time, finish all the rest of your stitching and then fill in your background like this is. So I've stitched back over where my wash away thread is on this one and I've stitched, started stitching my background design on it and finish all of that and then when you wash it that first line of stitching washes away the wash away thread is gone you have one line of stitching left and then you have this beautiful outcome with trapunto on it